After nearly two years of trying, I have finally designed a near-perfect cycloidal drive. This was my first attempt using my new method, and it's not quite perfect, but it's nearly there. So this is a cycloidal drive. If you are unfamiliar with this system, it is a speed reducer that allows you to fit a really high ratio in a very small area. For example, this one gear would produce a 20 to 1 gear reduction. The idea with this system is that you have an internally facing gear on the outside, or in my case you have a bunch of pins to take the place of the gear, and then you have another gear on the inside, except the internal gear would have one less tooth than the external. The internal gear would then have an eccentric bearing at its center. This bearing would be eccentric because the center of rotation for the bearing itself will be offset from the center rotation of the gear. This produces a wobbling kind of motion and is the reason that this cycloidal drive is also known as a wobble drive. This wobbling motion rolls the internal gear around the inside here and forces it to engage with all of the external teeth. The reason that this reduces the speed is because the internal gear has one less tooth than the external. So each time that the input shaft makes one full rotation and it pushes the gear all the way around, the internal gear will shift over by one tooth since there is one tooth difference between the internal and external gears. And thus, since this internal gear has 20 teeth, it'll take 20 rotations on the input shaft to rotate the gear one full rotation. Typically, this internal gear here will have a few pins that extrude out of its face. These pins then fit into an external ring with holes in them that are slightly larger than the diameter of the pins themselves. Since those holes will be slightly larger than the pins, the output ring then rectifies the wobbling rotation of the internal gear, converting it into a smooth continuous rotation at the lowered speed and higher torque. Now designing this is not as simple as it may seem. You could just make an internally facing gear with 21 teeth and then a normal gear with 21 and fit that inside of it, but that system would be fairly sloppy. If a cycloidal gear is designed perfectly, then each lobe on the gear will maintain at least one point of contact with one of the external pins at all time. So when the gear isn't moving, you can see that each of these pins is touching one of the lobes. Because of this, if a cycloidal drive is designed perfectly, there will be no backlash in the system. These points of contact will prevent it from shifting or rotating slightly. So if designed correctly, a cycloidal drive is a zero backlash system. And this one I've created here is very close, but still not perfect. With the naked eye, it does appear that each of the pins is in contact with one of the lobes, but they're not quite. There's still a little bit of slop in the system, although it is very little. The distance between the lobes and the pins varies slightly. The closest ones are actually touching. They have a distance of zero. And the farthest one has a distance of five microns, which of course is nearly nothing and is practically invisible, but it is still something and it still means that my design method isn't quite perfect. Although I do have an idea of what I can do differently to take it that final step and to make it truly perfect. But I was very happy with this design. It looks beautiful. And like I said, it is nearly perfect. So I wanted to make it a reality and see if I can make this work in real life. So I created another design based off the first one that's meant to fit onto a NEMA 17 stepper motor. It has the exact same internal gear profile, except on the outside here. Instead of having 21 pins, it's a 21 tooth gear. Then, like I said earlier, it has these pins that extrude from the gear face, which then fit into this output ring, which rectifies the rotation. So if this works perfectly, this shaft here on the motor will rotate 20 times faster than this ring out here. So I went ahead and 3D printed this on my new large format 3D printer, and I've got the final piece right here. So this is the fully 3D printed and assembled piece. I can take the output ring off here so you can see the internal gear there. When I printed this, the tolerances weren't great and the internal gear didn't fit inside of the external gear. So I had to take a file to some of the teeth and, and knock them down a little bit so that it fit inside. But now that it does fit, there is no wobble in it whatsoever. It's a very tight, really good fit. 
Then you can see the pins here that engage with the output ring to rectify the rotation. Overall, I'm very happy with this print. It's very rigid and came out pretty darn close to the intended dimensions. So I've got this stepper motor hooked up to a mini driver in Arduino, so I can go ahead and make it spin. So there you can see that the input shaft is spinning and that the internal gear is spinning with it. You can also see that every rotation the internal gear makes pushes the whole assembly around a little bit, forcing it to engage with the external teeth and slowly rotate. It's kind of a beautiful motion. The rotation is almost hypnotic. So then I can go ahead and put this output ring on top and the holes on the ring will engage with these pins that are on the internal gear. So now you can see that the output ring is also rotating and it's rotating at 1 20th of the speed of the input shaft. As far as noise goes, it isn't too bad. There's a little bit of rubbing, I think, but that's really just with the output shaft and that's because my tolerances weren't great. But most of the noise you hear is really just from the motor itself turning. And then if you look down in the holes on top of the output ring, you can see the little pins in there are wobbling around. Now the most important thing with this is its strength. And as far as strength goes, it's really strong. I cannot stop it at all. I can't even begin to slow it down with my fingers. It'd take a pretty good force to stop that output ring, which is fantastic. So overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's about time that I was able to design this thing. And I didn't expect that it would feel as strong as it does. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the speed on this a little bit. It's now spinning at twice the speed it's just as strong, if not stronger, than it was before. There's a look at the inside. And again, that motion is just hypnotic. One of the best things about a cycloidal drive is how compact it is. This thing is tiny. I mean, it's already a relatively small motor, but the gearbox is only a fraction of the size of it. Usually when you think of gearing, it's pretty large. And it's not at all uncommon to have a gear reduction system that is the same size as your motor, if not larger. But this cycloidal drive is only a fraction of the size of the motor, and it could be a lot smaller. And it's only plastic. If this was made out of, let's say, aluminum or maybe steel, then it could be even smaller for the same strength. But this is still pretty slow. I'm going to try and spin this to ever motor up to its maximum speed. So there you go, the motor is at maximum speed, that's around 750 RPMs. So then the output ring here is rotating at 37.5 RPMs. So that's a little over half a rotation per second. One of the inherent problems with cycloidal drives is vibration. Since the whole thing is wobbling around, the center of mass is constantly changing. This isn't really a concern here since the motor itself has so much mass compared to the ring. And since it's also plastic, so it just really doesn't have enough mass to change anything significantly. But if this was an aluminum gear uh, with a smaller motor at much higher speeds, then vibration would definitely be a consideration. Usually that's remedied by having two of these gears. So just one stack on top of the other, uh, both being at the opposite points in their rotation. So that way, no matter where they are in rotation, the center mass will always be at the center. So then one of them is just there to balance out and the, only one of them actually transmits the rotation. So I turned down the speed on this a little bit so I could talk about some numbers. So this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor. This one in particular is rated for 84 ounce inches. And since this internal gear here has 20 teeth, that means that this cycloidal drive gearbox is a 20 to 1 gear reduction. So the theoretical torque output of this would be 84 ounce inches times 20. So that would be 1,680 ounce inches of torque. So that's hard to imagine, so for an easier reference point, that is 8.75 foot-pounds of torque. So that means that if you were to hold this so that the shaft was parallel to the ground and you had a lever that was one foot coming perpendicular to the shaft, then you could hang 8.75 pounds from it and it would be able to hold it, if not 
rotate around with it, which is an insane amount of torque for a small motor like this. I mean, it's just a separate motor, so it's not meant to be strong at all. It's only meant to be precise. So the motor itself is fairly weak, but of course that number is only theoretical. So the real thing wouldn't be quite as strong as that, of course, since there's probably a lot of energy lost in internal friction, since it's all just 3D printed plastic with fairly bad tolerances. But nonetheless, this thing is still very strong. It feels a lot stronger than I thought it would. This was just meant to be a proof of concept, and it was definitely a very successful proof of concept. It turned out beautifully, and it worked exactly like I hoped it would, if not better. So this little mini project has definitely got me excited about the potential that cycloidal drives can have. So I'm definitely going to make some more cycloidal drives, but I'd like to make some with some upgrades. First of all, I don't want to use stepper motors anymore. They're not meant for strength applications and they don't benefit a ton from a high gear reduction like a cycloidal drive can offer. So I'd like to switch from this NEMA 17 to a good size BLDC motor, maybe some 350 kV aero drive motors. Something like that could have three or four times the torque and could spin 10 times faster. Of course, I've already done some calculations with those motors with uh, gearboxes that I haven't designed yet, and the theoretical numbers are unimaginably powerful. So I'd like to upgrade the motors, but more importantly, I'd like to upgrade these gearboxes to some metal. I do have a small 3-axis CNC which is capable of cutting aluminum, so I'd like to get some really small bits and then cut out some super precise internal aluminum gears. I could also cut out an external gear, but I think I'd rather go for uh, steel pins. Something like that should offer me a ton of strength and potentially a really high precision. So a BLDC motor with a metal cycloidal gearbox and likely a two-stage gearbox at that would be insanely powerful and I can't wait to get started on it. So this is my proof of concept cycloidal drive. This thing has been literally two years in the making and I am ecstatic to have it finally working. I may make a video specifically explaining how exactly I designed this because again, it is a really complex thing. It took me a long time to figure out, but that would definitely be down the line. But I'm very happy with this, looks great. The motion is beautiful and I'm ready to move on to something stronger, faster, all around better. So I'll get working on that, but that's all I have for now. So. Bye.